I'm going to explain this orientation size trait view controller that I created. And rather than use the built-in size classes that Apple has provided, it overrides a few of them. And then what it does is it allows you to do a customization for portrait versus landscape or iPhone-like versus iPad-like. Or you could do for all four cases. Now, this probably doesn't make a lot of sense trying to describe it. I find it's a very hard, difficult thing to describe, but I will show you what I'm going to do and then I will take you through it in the storyboard and show you how easy it is and then it, it should come clear. Um, I will, for this example, I'm just going to do a customization where I want my UI to look different for portrait versus landscape regardless of whether it's on iPhone or iPad. So I'm only going to customize uh, one dimension here. And my guess is this is the most common scenario where I would see this being used. So I'll switch over to these simulators here. And you can see what we got is on the iPhone, I got this very, very simple app. Two views, a primary view and a secondary view. And the primary view is in green. And in the portrait mode, it's on top. They're stacked vertically here. If I take this iPhone and now rotate it, you'll see that they switch out and now uh, they're stacked horizontally. Okay, if I go back. And similarly, it does the same thing on the iPad. Uh, and so here it is running in landscape with it stacked horizontally. And if I rotate it, you see that now they're stacked vertically. And if I rotate back. Another interesting case here is in the slide over modes. So if I force this into slide over mode by putting Safari over here, now we get two thirds view and actually even with the iPad in landscape, okay, now it is the aspect ratio is such that it, it is um, in portrait. So you can see it here and it'll stay portrait here. And if I go back to full screen, it will switch back to this side-by-side -side mode, okay? So I'm going to quickly show you the code, and then we'll come back to this in a minute, just to show you how simple this really is. So really, we're really overriding just this one method, trait collection, that gets returned. And we're kind of taking over a little bit about what the horizontal and vertical size classes mean. And we're doing it based on whether it's portrait or it's what we, I'm calling a big view. And you get to kind of decide what you think is a big view is. Uh, so we'll look at that in a minute. Um, I'm going to swap back here to the preview again. This kind of down here shows all the different um, devices and orientations so you can kind of see the multitude of what we now have to deal with. Okay. To show you how this is done in the storyboard, what I'm going to do is I've got this simple view and I'm actually going to delete out these two views that I added in and we're going to build them back. So the only thing I've done so far to customize this is to color the background red. So that will allow us to easier see the safe area that's outside of what's being drawn. Uh, I am using safe areas. Okay. And I do have for this view controller that um, it is subclassing this orientation size trait view controller with the code I showed you that overrides that one method. But this isn't used when it's running in the storyboard. And so there's some tricks we have to use to get around that. Um, but so what I'm going to do, I'm going to start with a, um, an SE in portrait mode here to, to build this out. OK. And so here I got UI views. I'm going to take, put two UI views here. OK. This is going to be our primary one. 
And what I'm going to do, I'm going to take his background color and turn these down so he'll turn green. Okay. And then the secondary one, um, we'll make him yellow. Okay. All right. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pin this guy to the top, to the left, to the right, and to his nearest neighbor on the bottom, which will be this other view. Uh, the constraint of margins doesn't matter uh, uh, what the safe area is on, so you can check that or uncheck that. Okay. So it's not fully constrained yet, and we see these errors coming up. All right. And let's take this secondary view. Okay, it's already constrained to be um, attached to the primary view, but we'll go to the left to the left side and right to the right side and, and to the bottom. Okay, so we so we're, we're still not quite completely constrained because they know to fill this, but they don't know how much each of them get. And so if I drag down here and say equal widths, then we will be I mean, equal heights, we will be completely constrained and they'll pop into place and we see no more errors. Okay. Now, actually, I want this to be two thirds and one third, so I'll go over to this uh, equal height constraint. I'm going to edit this and make this multiplier two to one, and now we see that's the way I want it. Okay. So that's all well and good, but if I change the orientation down here, you'll see it now has the primary view on top and they're still stacked, but I want the secondary view to move over here to the right and be them horizontally stacked. Okay, so that's the whole trick on what we're going to do. So the way to do this is I'm going to come in here and select all of these constraints and you see that they're installed, but we want them only installed for uh, this one size class. Okay. Now, if we go back to my little sheet, you see the width size class is kind of iPhone or iPad, kind of the size thing, and then the, the height is going to be portrait or landscape. Okay, so for the width, we want any width. So if I come back here, okay, select these, and select all these. And so I'm going to add a variation, and the width is any, and the height is regular, which is indicates a portrait. So we add that variation, and then we remove the, because we don't want these um, installed any other time. At this point, if we switch over to the orientation here, now you see we have no constraints in that are being used at this point because we told them not to be used um, under this compact height. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these views, I'm going to do the same thing I did before, um, and I'm basically going to just move these so that when I set their constraints that they will bind properly with the nearest neighbors. Okay, so here for the primary view again. I'll go a little quicker this time. The top, left to the left safe area, right to the secondary view, and the bottom. Okay, again, constraint of margin doesn't matter. We'll add those four constraints. We'll go to the secondary view, and to the top. Now, he's already constrained on that side. We don't want to double up that constraint. Okay, so we add these three constraints. Now, we need one more. Uh, again, um, we'll start by just setting them to have equal, this time, widths, not heights. And we'll see that, that they're able to pop into place. But we want this, again, to be two big, twice as big as that one. So we'll edit this, and we'll put a multiplier of 2 to 1 on here. Okay. Now we're close, but again, if we switch back to this other orientation, the problem is now we have all these... 16 actual constraints and 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 that they're conflicting uh, So again, what we have to do is go into these new constraints. We just added and um, 
select these and again for any width which is kind of iPad iPhone but the compact height means portrait okay we add this variation and there now we have it we don't want these installed any other time now you can see that we will always either be portrait or landscape, so we do have this constraint for all variations. Um, and we can run this now and it's going to work. And now you might be wondering, though, let's look and see what it looks like in an iPad. Now we have a little bit of a problem. If we go to a, um, let's go to a portrait iPad, okay, and let me see make this a little smaller. You can see that's correct, but if we switch over to or to a landscape orientation, it's not correct because now we have a landscape, but they're stacked this way. And this was I was saying is that the interface builder is using kind of the built-in size classes, not the ones returned from our custom orientation size tree view controller. Okay, but there is a way to view this and that's kind of what this cheat sheet has in there and it suggests what to use for these various configurations. For the portrait on an iPad you can use any um, any iPad in portrait and it'll be fine because um, they're all regular regular but for to kind of see a landscape the best is to use an iPhone Plus in landscape. Okay, So if I go to the plus size of the iPhone in landscape, and now we see that it's like this. And that's kind of because the size class return for a plus size is regular width, where it's compact width for the other sizes. Okay. Um, I'll just go ahead and run this so you can see that this is the same as before. Uh, we'll run it on this 9.7-inch uh, iPad Pro. Here it comes up. Um, bring this up a little bit. I'll rotate this guy. You see he goes down. And bring up Savari. Now we see that he's now in portrait mode and stacked. And we come back, it's still stacked here, but when you go to full screen, then he switches back over this way. Okay. So if you follow that, I think you can see how this can be pretty easily done. Um, I would like to say one other thing that um, a lot of recently, in past, um, Apple introduced the stack view controller, and a lot of people might be thinking, well, wouldn't this be easier to use the stack, just use a stack view and then set customize it on horizontal or vertical based on the size classes. And yes, that would work for this very simple case. Uh, you do run into trouble fairly quickly though, because the stack view controller adds in a lot of auto layout constraints. And when you're trying to do additional, add additional constraints, like I did here for the two thirds, one third view, uh, you can very easily get into um, issues where you have conflicting constraints. So I found it easiest to just to, to use them all like, like I've done here. And I will switch back to this cheat sheet again. So you could use the same method and use one scene in a storyboard and actually have these customizations for all four of these. Now I think in, in practice this portrait versus landscape is probably doable. Um, if you just want to do iPhone versus iPad, kind of something where you had a lot of space, um, want to kind of differentiate based on the kind of amount of real estate in total you have, that that might make sense. If you're doing all four, it's probably getting a little too complicated and it's probably better to have two storyboards, one for the iPhone and one for the iPad. So. Hope you enjoyed this. Look for the code in GitHub and
this video on YouTube. Thank you.